Hey, this is Jeff from Tenacore. Today we are going to talk about buying a concealed carry gun and six things to consider. The first thing to address, which is probably the most common advice given to a new shooter or someone who is considering carrying a gun, is to go to the range or go to the gun store and find the gun that feels best. The challenge with that advice is, do you know how the gun is supposed to feel? On one hand, it seems intuitive. Just pick up the gun, does it feel a certain way in your hand, and do you like that feeling? The question that I have to you is, again, do you know what it's supposed to feel like? Do you know how to correctly grip the gun? Do you know what your primary hand is supposed to do? Do you know what your support hand is supposed to do? Is it just where you place it on the gun, or is it how you grip it? And how do the mechanics of all that work together? So most shooters, when they first get a gun, and really most shooters um, who've had guns for a long time actually don't know how to grip the gun correctly because it's not just where you place your hands but it's how you grip the gun it is the amount of tension you have in your primary hand versus your support hand and that is something that is learned over time for some reason gun people want to be relativists and like whatever feels right to you you like whatever the little gun fairy tells in your ear and you whatever that subjectively feels like to you that's what you ought to buy the reality is you probably don't know how to grip the gun correctly and you should look to somebody or some group of people who have adopted a set of tactics and skills that you want to emulate, and I would just buy exactly what they use. And so imitation is the answer here, not buying the thing that feels good to you. Because if you don't know what it's supposed to feel like, then you don't know what good is. Bottom line, don't buy the gun that feels good to you, buy the gun that works. If you follow that advice, what is probably gonna happen is that at some point in the future, you're gonna learn how to actually grip the gun and how to actually shoot the gun, and you'll probably decide that the gun you bought is stupid. That is what most people go through, that is what I went through. I bought a SIG 228, and then I bought a CAR P9, and ultimately landed on a Glock in the end. But it took multiple purchases of me going and like romantically thinking, oh, I want this all metal gun in the SIG, or I want you know, this small compact gun. But the reality was I came back to the thing that I knew I should have bought, which was a nine millimeter Glock in the first place. Because the people that I looked up to, the people that I respected, the people who shot the way I wanted to shoot, that's what they carried. And I should have just started there and I would have wasted a lot less money. The second thing we want to talk about is size. So oftentimes people are hyper-focused on carrying the smallest gun possible because they feel like that is going to be the best thing for them. The challenge is that the smaller gun is for sure easier to carry, but the smaller gun is harder to shoot. So the idea of smallness versus largeness, right? On the one hand, the small gun is easy to conceal. On the other hand, the larger the gun, the easier it is to shoot. If you're just interested in teaching somebody who particularly has a small frame or small hands to shoot, you actually want them to use the biggest gun possible, right? The biggest gun that will allow them to grip the gun correctly, and that will provide them with the easiest learning experience. And so the idea that you'd buy a gun, maybe a mid-size or full-size gun as your first gun, I think is generally a good idea, and that would be the gun that you would learn on and train on, and then complementary to that, you would go buy a smaller gun, and ultimately that would be your carry gun. So something like a Glock 17 paired with a Glock 48 would be a good combo of doing most of your training with the Glock 17, and then some of your training with the Glock 48, and then the Glock 48 ends up becoming the gun that probably you carry most of the time, because it is a lighter weight gun, it is easier to conceal. So when we're talking about shootability, we're talking about like how fast and accurate can you shoot the gun. In the competitive world, people are going to things like bigger, larger, heavier guns. So like steel frame guns are popular in the competitive shooting world. And that's because the larger, heavier guns are just easier to shoot fast and accurate. So again, buying a gun that allows for training to be successful and for you to build confidence and build your skill set is gonna be the most important thing in the beginning. The third thing to consider when buying a new gun would be reliability and durability of the gun. So reliability would be um, how often does the gun malfunction and durability would be do you have parts that break, right? Those are two different things. There's an aspect where you don't know, right? You're buying this new item that was made in some factory somewhere and you're getting the gun and you don't really know for sure whether your gun is going to work. It is just a mechanical device and all mechanical devices 
can fail. However, there are some mechanical devices that are not designed to the same standard and manufactured to the same standard as others. And so you want to buy something that's gonna work. If you're buying it just as a hobby, as a, hey, this gun looks cool, this gun feels good, and I wanna own this because I live in America and I wanna exercise my right to own whatever firearm I want, then you should do that. But that is different than I want a gun that I'm gonna use for the defense of myself and the defense of the people that I care about. And that gun you wanna make sure is reliable. You wanna, you wanna make sure that every time you pull the trigger, the cartridge goes off. You wanna make sure that there are not tons and tons of maintenance that you have to do. Like a, your classic 1911, you can get a 1911 that is reliable, but typically, they are higher maintenance. So you gotta change out springs, you gotta make sure they're, you gotta clean them. Um, and that might not be the best gun for the average shooter, right? So if you're gonna treat your gun like you treat your lawnmower, then don't buy a 1911. Buy something like a Glock or buy something that is a polymer framed gun. Another thing to consider would be what guns have been tested and adopted by large government agencies. You know, certainly there are politics and other things that can be at play in those tests, but generally speaking, the guns that are adopted by large government agencies have gone through some sort of testing protocol. And if it has passed that testing protocol, then it probably is gonna work out better for you than something that hasn't. It's great that there are gun companies out there, either new gun companies or other gun companies that are experimenting with things. But the question is, is your gunfight a science project for the gun manufacturer? Or do you want your gunfight to be the thing where you have a reliable gun, you have reliable tested equipment that is gonna help you and support you to be successful in a violent confrontation? Another consideration for buying your first gun is gonna be aftermarket support. So often people don't think about that. They think, I start with a gun, and then they are like, this gun's super cool. They go out and they look for a holster, they look for sights, they look for a red dot, you know, a plate, a robust mounting system. They look for all these things and they can't find the stuff that they want. The better way to think about the whole thing is start with the support equipment. Holster, what light, what trigger, what sight, what whatever are you gonna put on the gun and why? And then from there decide, okay, I know there's support for those things with this gun versus this gun. And that is kind of the inverse for most people and how they would think about it, but probably a better way to think about it. And that way you know you're buying a gun that is properly supported with all of the correct equipment that you would want to carry and use. So another common question or thing that people try to work through, particularly for a newer shooter, is what caliber do I buy? Do I buy a nine millimeter? Do I buy 380 auto? Do I buy 40 cal? Do I buy 45? Like those are interesting and fun debates. With modern hollow point ammunition, it really hasn't been a debate. Like people look at like stopping power and like all of that kind of stuff. And there's all sorts of myths and uh, like pseudoscience around all of that stuff. Another aspect of the thing though is reliability of the gun and shootability of the gun. The larger the felt recoil, the more difficult it's gonna be to shoot. And if you compare the terminal ballistics of modern hollow point ammunition, there really is very little difference between nine millimeter, 40 and 45. However, nine millimeter is more reliable, really because of the shape. If you look at a nine millimeter, the cartridge the shell is actually tapered. And so basically you're taking a, a subtle but a wedge-shaped object and putting it into the chamber over and over and over again. So when everything gets hot and heated up and you're shooting a lot, the nine millimeter is much more reliable. And there's a reason why nine millimeter is adopted by so many people. Um, and there was a time in the late 80s and early 90s where there was a trend away from that. But at this point, we've kind of come full circle and most of the law enforcement agencies that drove towards the 40 caliber, which is really a solution in search of a problem, um, and the 45 have mostly gone away and we have come back to the nine millimeter because it is more reliable, it is easier to shoot, it is more abundant, it is cheaper, like all of the things about it and there really is no debate.
So the final thing to talk about is what happens after you buy the gun. Once you own the gun, you gotta learn how to use it. You gotta go find training from some sort of vetted instructor that is gonna teach you how to correctly grip the gun, who's gonna teach you how to correctly manipulate the trigger, who's gonna talk to you about carry considerations, about equipment, about holsters, about belts, about mag pouches, how to use all of those things, and how to basically build a system that you can integrate into your life so that you consistently carry a gun and you have the confidence and ability to use the gun. Another thing to consider, and probably something to think about before you go buy a gun, is gonna be the moral, ethical, and legal considerations of it. Do you believe there are people in this world based on their actions that need to be hurt or killed? If you don't, you probably have no business buying a gun for self-defense. So that would be the first starting point. If you do, then you have to ask yourself, are you willing to do that hurting or killing of that person? And if you are, then it would be reasonable for you to go buy a gun. And then you have to start to think through, well, when would I use the gun, right? There are some people who are gonna use the gun only in defense of themselves. There are some people who would use a gun never in defense of themselves, but only in defense of other people. And so those are things to start to consider. What are the moral and legal considerations with owning a gun and using a gun? And under what circumstances are you going to use it, right? A common thing, there are a bunch of dudes like, plaid shirts and beards and and whiskey are like eh, anybody comes into my house i'm gonna shoot them like that sounds tough i guess but is that actually the right answer if someone comes into your house and is trying to steal your tv is the right answer to shoot that guy what is more costly to you them stealing your 800 dollars tv or you shooting them and dealing with everything in court in some sort of civil legal battle forever or now your name is in the headlines and you have to deal with you know all the weird interactions at work and in your community of you're the guy that shot the guy who came into your house trying to take your TV like you have to you have to balance those things and maybe for you you think it is um, and if you are legally justified and morally justified then good for you but those are serious things to consider and are there other things that one could do if, if someone comes into your house even someone who's not supposed to come into your house to prevent them from doing harm to you and the people you care about um, and maybe you're less concerned about your material belongings and then there's also the uh, the issue of like making a mistake the person can't you think someone's breaking into your house but it's your teenage daughter um, and, you, and you shoot your teenage daughter you know that those are things that happen and so just just the blanket idea that anybody comes in my house, I'm going to shoot them, is really kind of um, immature and juvenile. You know, the use of force is a serious thing that you should consider in more detail and not just think that I'm tough, I have a beard, and I have a plaid shirt, and therefore I, I got a gun and I'm going to use it whenever I want to use it. You want to be the professional user, the professionally minded user, and not just the want to be tough guy user. Another thing to consider after you purchase the gun is like how is owning the gun going to impact your life? Where do you store the gun? Do you have small children and stupid adults in the home such that you can't just have the gun on a counter or in a drawer that you have to secure it in some way in your home? What sort of clothing do you have? Does, your, does the gun, the size of the gun, the shape of the gun, the, how you carry the gun, does that fit with your clothing? Um, does it fit with like your coat, your jacket? Like all of those things are considerations for owning a gun. If you've decided I'm gonna buy a gun and I'm gonna pretty much carry a gun every day for the rest of my life, that's gonna drive a whole bunch of behavioral things. It's not just like where you store the gun and how you carry the gun, the clothes you wear, but then like, do you drink alcohol? And what does that look like? Do you go into a bar? What does that look like? Do you go over to a friend's house? What does that look like? There's all sorts of things that introducing the gun is potentially gonna change all sorts of things about your life and or perhaps should change all sorts of things about your life and so those are things that a professionally minded gun owner and gun user is going they're going to think about those things and they're going to make lifestyle choices and lifestyle decisions based on now the fact that they've integrated this gun into things. Another thing to consider, like does the gun give you more confidence and more boldness to insert yourself into things? Or does it actually make you more hesitant to insert yourself into things, right? So if you're somebody who's kind of a hothead, you get in arguments with people, you stick with that and you start getting into arguments with people. And now that maybe there's a little bumping or shoving or whatever, and there's a gun involved, that is potentially a gunfight, right? So you gotta think about your ego and your pride and what are you willing to do and walk away from? Like disrespect, like is that a thing that you need to worry about? People disrespect you in some way, do you need to go prove yourself to them? 
if you're someone who's carrying a gun, again, that potentially is catastrophic. And so those are, those are lifestyle considerations of how you carry yourself, how you act towards other people, the clothes you carry, where you drive, where you go, where you eat dinner, who you hang out with, all of those things are now things that you're introducing a gun into your life and you potentially should reconsider some of your lifestyle choices. So the easy answer for all of this is a 9mm Glock, starting with a Glock 19. That is, the Glock 19 is maybe at this point the most universally used gun um, by professionally minded people. It is a great balance of concealability and shootability and reliability. Most people, when they're designing a size of a gun, use the Glock 19 as the standard. And so that is probably the place to start and probably the gun for most people. There are probably more of them out there than anything else. They are commonly adopted by large government entities. It is a known commodity. For the United States military, if the unit or the group has the choice, of what gun they choose, they're probably using a 9mm Glock and not what is the standard issue gun of you know, the big army or whoever else. Like I'm not romantic about it, I don't really care, but it's just a known commodity and you know it's gonna work. There are things about the 9mm Glock that people don't like and all of those things, you know, whether it's the ergonomics or the trigger or whatever, yes, those are issues, but you know what you're gonna get and it's consistent and reliable. Going up from there, in the Glock world, you know, going to a Glock 17 or something like that makes sense from a shootability perspective. The longer grip of the Glock 17 makes it harder to conceal. And really, grip length, not barrel length or slide length, is the hardest thing to conceal. And so, going down from there, you can go to like a 43X or a Glock 48, and those are going to be easier to conceal but they are not gonna be as shootable. So that is a, those are things to think about. A Glock 48 paired with a Glock 17 is a good combo. Um, with a Glock 19, if you want one gun to kind of do everything, it's kind of the right answer. There are other guns out there. So like a Smith & Wesson, M the M&P family of guns, they're well-tested, good guns, particularly the generation, the 2.0. The CZ guns are decent guns. The Walther PVP guns are good guns. HK makes great guns and they have for a long time. They just are not as common. And so if you're thinking about aftermarket support, it's gonna be harder to find stuff. So those are the guns that I would probably start with. And then if you're into guns, you wanna buy a bunch of stuff, then buy whatever you want and buy a gun, test it, buy a bunch of ammo, 5,000 rounds later, if you find that to be a reliable gun that you're willing to trust your life to, then stick with it and carry it. Thanks for watching. If you have questions, post them in the comments. We'll try to get to those as soon as we can. Um, for more information from Tenacore and to watch other videos, click here, click here, click here, click here. There you go. Now you got to do four videos. <laughs> <laughs>